painful to watch. <laughs> cut, cut! Cut! Hey guys, I'm Nidge, and this is a picture of me with my favourite pot of dolphins. <laughs> ah, cute. Now, you've probably heard plenty about climate change. And maybe, like me, you're worried about how it might be affecting the planet. Climate change can be tricky to see around us and the mechanics and processes are sometimes invisible. So today, I'm gonna go through the basics. The five most important things I reckon you need to know about climate change, with a few of them explained in simple experiments. It's a fact that the average temperature on the Earth's surface is around 14 degrees Celsius. But in the last 50 to 60 years, there's been a clear trend upwards in global average temperatures. At the start of the industrial age, we started burning fossil fuels, oil, gas and coal, for transport and electricity. And these release carbon dioxide, which fuels that temperature rise. Usually, CO2 is an invisible gas, but we've got this special thermal imaging camera with exactly the right filter on it that allows us to visualise the CO2, like the CO2 that's in my breath. It's the same with burning gas. The carbon is burning with the oxygen in the air to create a massive flame and some carbon dioxide. So what I've got here is some CO2 dry ice, which is turning into CO2 gas and flowing over our planet. And this is kind of what's going on with the Earth. The CO2 gas in the atmosphere is allowing sunlight in, warming up the Earth, which is emitting thermal radiation, which is then blocked and re-emitted back to Earth by the CO2 gas in the atmosphere. The more CO2 in the atmosphere, the thicker and more insulating that blanket is, and the warmer the Earth gets. And it's not just the CO2 up there changing things. We release all sorts of gases that have similar effects, including nitrous oxide and methane. <coughs> Hang on a minute. Haven't animals been emitting greenhouse gases for millions of years? Don't animals breathe out CO2 and plants breathe it in? And hasn't this been in balance for a long time? Definitely true. But the difference is that we're now taking carbon that's been buried under the ground for ages and turning it into CO2 in the atmosphere altering the present day carbon cycle. The natural variation of releasing or storing greenhouse gases is something the Earth has done many times over its geological history. What many climate scientists are worried about today is the current rate of change. CSIRO projections suggest a global mean temperature rise ranging between 2.6 degrees and 4.8 degrees by the year 2100. With temperatures that extreme, people will be spending a lot more time at the beach. But with rising sea levels, where exactly will our beaches be? Let's ask Tim Flannery. Ah, Mitch. Hi. Good How to are see you? you? With rising sea levels, where exactly will our beaches be? Well, by 2100, if somewhere over there at the base of that sand dune, and I guess for beachgoers that's not too much of a deal, yeah. yeah. But yeah. it's what happens behind that that's important, because this is a big dune being pushed up by storms and things. It drops down below that, and that's where the suburbs are. And there's like a quarter of a million houses, really, which are going to be threatened. What will that mean for the airport that's over there? Well, well, you can see how low that runway is there. I mean, you know, the, the, two metres of sea level rise changing that baseline, you're going to have storm surges and high tides, which are going to make that inoperable. That's a big, expensive piece of infrastructure, yeah. you know, that's at stake. A potential sea level rise of two metres was demonstrated in a 2017 study by the US National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. However, there is no hard and fast figure. Data from the most recent 2013 study from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change predicts a likely sea level rise between 0.4 and 0.9 of a metre by 2100. I mean, you can, you can see, you know, that's, that's where we were. And there's that coastal dune. Yeah. And we're now come over to here. And this area here was originally a, a wetland of some sort. You know? So there's not a lot of leeway here, really, for, uh, for, for allowing for that two metres of sea level rise. I mean, we are changing things now 170 times faster than the natural system drives change, right? And the scale of it is just huge. Sure. Sweet. Three climate change facts down. And our next one is... If I light a flame under this balloon filled with air, it pops within a second. But if I light a flame under this balloon filled with water, it can last a lot longer. 
And the reason for this is because water has a much, much higher heat capacity, the ability to store heat. In fact, water's capacity to store heat is 4,000 times higher than air. Water's heat capacity is one of the reasons why the ocean can still be warm in late autumn and why it can take ages to warm up at the start of summer. The marine organisms that make up coral reefs are finely tuned to the ocean's temperature. Between February and April 2016, the ocean around the Great Barrier Reef was 1 to 1.5 degrees C above the long-term average, leading to the occurrence of bleaching in 93% of reefs. Almost 30% of shallow coral reefs died. How much hard evidence do we have for our contribution to climate change? The answer is in the ice. So what actually is in the ice that tells us about the climate? There's all sorts of stuff that we can measure when we go and look at the composition of the snow that then later sort of forms the big ice sheets over Antarctica. Not all water is the same. Um, some molecules of water are heavier than others and so that gives us a way of understanding how temperature has changed in the past over Antarctica. We've gone from a carbon dioxide level of around about 180 parts per million and we're now well above 400 parts per million and increasing about three parts per million every year. Yeah, the, the evidence that humans are causing today's climate change is irrefutable. <laughs> human-induced climate change and global ecological crisis. What can we do about it, Tim? Cut emissions from fossil fuels hard and fast, so get rid of fossil fuels. Then invest in technologies that can draw some of the CO2 out of the atmosphere. That is so critical because there's too much there already. So seaweed farming, silicate rocks making plastics from CO2. And thirdly, to get more efficient with almost everything we do, because unless we can live more lightly on the planet, we are going to run into serious trouble. But couldn't a warmer climate lead to some good things too?